developers can get the details about the current meeting of the app that's installed in a couple different ways. Now, meeting apps can take advantage of the support for single sign-on in all apps. Now, refer to the Microsoft Teams documentation for single sign-on support for tabs for more information, including how to configure Azure Active Directory and your app to obtain an SSO token from Microsoft Teams, SSO standing for single sign-on. Azure AD applications used to support SSO in Microsoft Teams have a couple different requirements. For example, they must be multi-tenant apps and they must expose the access as user scope permission. Um, and they should also trust all Microsoft Teams client applications that are calling the app. Creating and configuring this permission is done in the expose an API section of the Azure AD app configuration. And here you specify a unique URI for the application of the in the format of API colon slash slash and if it's a tab, you're going to say app host domain, which is the domain of where the app is hosted, and then slash the client ID or the app ID um, of the registered app from Azure AD. You then are going to add permissions and optionally trust an existing client app to call this permission. Now, when you automatically trust an existing client app, such as Microsoft Teams desktop, mobile, and web clients, Azure AD won't require the user to consent to the application using this for this permission. That's going to be pre-consented for us. Now to configure the Azure AD application to trust the Microsoft Teams clients and add them as pre-authorized applications by their IDs, you're going to trust the um, access, uh, access as user permission on two specific client IDs that you'll find in the documentation. One is for the Microsoft Teams web client and the other one is for the Microsoft Teams mobile and desktop clients. Now, once the Azure AD application has been created, it must be associated with the Microsoft Teams app. And this is done in the app's manifest.json file in the web application info section. There are two parts to this section that must be updated for your application. The ID, this is the client ID of the registered Azure AD application, and the resource. Now, this is the URL of the app, which is the same thing as the URI that was used when registering the app in Azure AD. The domain portion of the URI must also be listed in the valid domains array of the app's manifest. Now the last step is to write the code that re requests an access token from Azure AD uh, for the current user. Now this token is only used to identify the user. It won't, be, it won't have any permissions for Microsoft Graph. Now your app may need to identify the user and in this case your, your app typically is going to provide this token uh, to your own backend system that uses the token to store user preferences or other information specific to the currently signed in user. So in this scenario, the token that you're gonna get back from Microsoft Teams includes a few properties that can be useful to your application. You're gonna have the name of the current user, like the display name, like John Doe. You can have the preferred username. Now, this is the user's UPN or their email address. There's an OID property, which is the unique object ID of the user, and this should be used to identify the user in your backend system as the username and preferred username properties. Those can be changed by the actual user or by an administrator, but the OID property or the object ID, that will never change. And then the TID is the unique tenant ID that the user belongs to. Now, if you use this access token in your own API, you should implement some accepted best practices when you're forwarding this token that's received from Microsoft Teams. Now this includes validating the token to ensure that it was created by Azure AD and it's from the expected authority and that the app is the intended audience of the token. And finally, um, that the token hasn't expired and the scope is set to access as user. Now in the scenario where your app needs to access Microsoft Graph, your code can use this token provided by Microsoft Teams to your app to start the OAuth 2 on behalf of flow, otherwise known as the OBO flow. Now, when the token is used in this way, it's referred to as the bootstrap token because it's only used um, to obtain an access token that can be used to call Microsoft Graph. Now, there are a couple different ways to get meeting details um, about the current meeting from Microsoft Graph. Now, one way to get the current meeting details uh, in a tab is using Microsoft Graph. Now, Microsoft Teams, the context object contains a meeting ID property of the current meeting. And this ID contains the ID of the chat for the meeting 
and it's going to be surrounded with a, um, a zero and a hash symbol and then a hash symbol and a zero. So on both ends, you'll have zeros and then one character in from both ends, you'll have a hash symbol. Developers can take that meeting ID that you get, you can remove that prefix and suffix of the zero and the hash, and you can use that to get more details from Microsoft Graph by issuing a query to Microsoft Graph uh, for that specific chat ID. And so you can see here, I'm issuing an HTTP GET to the Microsoft Graph chat endpoint, and I'm passing in the ID of that chat. So that's the meeting ID without those two characters on either end um, of the, the meeting ID. That's the chat ID. Now the Microsoft uh, Graph chat endpoint, it requires the chat.read scope in order to make a query, uh, issue that query. Now the response that I get back is going to contain some information about the current meeting, including a property called the join web URL of the meeting. Now that join web URL, that's the link that people can use to join the meeting. I can use this query I can use that value to query Microsoft Graph for all the details about the meeting. And so I can do that by issuing an HTTP GET to the Graph's online meetings endpoint, and I can filter all the online meetings by the join web URL that I just got back for that chat. And again, this endpoint requires the online meetings.read property. Now the response that I get back from the online meetings endpoint contains all the information about the meeting, including the meeting participants, their roles in the meeting, like the organizer or a presenter or just an attendee, and other details that are related to the meeting.